for South Sudan. Um, we'll be taking in questions for the whole day. So one by one, we can kick off. Yes. Right behind. Um, sir, um, well, um, so I'm from the Philippines, um, um, playing in front of the Philippine crowd, a, a lot of us Filipinos are aching for that um, virus spread as well, but we're just curious, what would you say are the, 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 the things that have made this possible for your program, um, um, and to help us, um, I guess, um, process also what would um, be, when, um, what would be um, a, a nice groundwork for, for our program as well, so. uh, I think it's a bit, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit different. I would have to know the situation. I think for us, uh, I, I've been doing basketball camps uh, since I got to the NBA in 2003, two, I mean 2004, 2005. That's when I did my first basketball camp. Um, and ever since I did camps um, in London, I did camps in Australia, in the U.S., and all over Africa every summer. Uh, I've never skipped a summer uh, without having a camp until COVID. Uh, but I was going to multiple places. Uh, while doing that, I did a lot of camps for South Sudanese kids in the diaspora, uh, all outside. Uh, so for me, I kind of knew before I even retired that there was a lot of talent. There was a lot of South Sudanese kids that just like myself, either representing another country or they just not considered good enough to represent that country, so they end up not having the countries to play for. Uh, so for me, uh, throughout my career, even though I represented uh, Great Britain, um, and I'm thankful for that. At the time, we didn't have um, you know, our country, South Sudan, we were going through a lot. So I represented uh, Great Britain, and I did everything that I can uh, to build that basketball program. Part of it. Um, and while I was there, I just, you know, um, it always was in the back of my mind, you know, what it would be like to play for uh, South Sudan. I never had the opportunity. Uh, so when I retired, uh, it was a lot easier to put it together because I was familiar with it. It wasn't just a random. We had a database of most of the players. Um, it's a lot of players that played for us in different windows that were in my camp since they were young. Uh, so I've been involved with the community, and I've been involved with the diaspora, uh, also among other things. So, you know, to, to be able to, you know, for this to come together, um, you know, I had a team with me that was familiar with uh, the majority of, you know, how we want to do it and what we want to do. Patricia, he's on BBC Radio. I wanted to ask, what were your expectations coming into this tournament and how proud you must be of what the team has achieved? Yes, uh, I'm very, I'm very proud. Uh, you know, it's, when, when, I, when I became the president of the Federation, um, I told everyone that my goal was to make it to, the, well, first was to get out of zone five and make it to the Afro basket and World Cup into the Olympics. And so far, we've been able to achieve all of that. Um, so, for me, it's, it's uh, you know it's, it's a special day. It's, uh, it's something that I knew that it was possible for us to do, uh, but I knew it would take a lot of work. Um, so, you know, just really credit goes to everybody. Uh, you know, from my team, uh, the president. South Sudan for believing in what we're doing and supporting us, the people of South Sudan for supporting us, not just in South Sudan, but all over the world. Uh, all the fans that, you know, see what we're doing and appreciate it and start supporting us. There's a lot of people out there that support South Sudan because it's an unbelievable story. It's an underdog story that, not just for South Sudanese, not just for Africa, but for the rest of the world. Um, it's a come up story. It's a feel good story that majority of people can relate to. So. You know, it's, it's, it's really, it's such a unique achievement because it's beyond basketball. You know, the basketball part allowed us to, you know, allowed us to be a center stage and for everyone here to see us. But what, what we're really about is for everyone to hear us and to kind of know our story, but also to know that there is a, you know, there is a young nation that's going in the right direction, that, you know, we want people to know us in a positive uh, image change the narrative 
and basketball is allowing us to do that. Even as I sit here, um, you know, I, I know there's a lot of people that are going to learn about South Sudan today. And when we get to the Olympics, uh, we'll be able to raise our flag uh, for the first time ever representing our country. We've had, you know, individuals from South Sudan represent different countries or represent under the refugee flag. But I think this is uh, this is the beginning of South Sudan uh, introduction to the world. Coach, um, Arthur here from TV News. Um, Coach, Coach Amy mentioned earlier that you guys started from scratch, right? Training outside concrete floors with literally eagles flying over you guys. Um, can you walk us through that entire 10 year process? And can you describe to us the journey so far and how you guys were able to fast track everything and now booking your ticket to the Olympics? Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, really I, I want to talk about Royale uh, for a second and, you know, where it goes through. I get a bit emotional when I talk about it. When I, uh, when I first went to the U.S. Uh, for high school, uh, well, you know, Royale was a senior at my high school. And Coach Montagna, who's the assistant coach, was the head coach uh, at Blair. Uh, when I went to Blair, I had no shoes. I had no basketball shoes. And, you know, Royale was the first to give me his shoes. And we remained friends. Uh, every holiday, I couldn't afford to fly back home. So I would stay at Royale's house. And, you know, um, I always had the, that in the back of my mind. And my coach uh, has always been there for me. But for me, throughout my journey, I learned that, you know, not every gift is just about what you buy somebody or, you know, um, it really, when you know somebody, you know the best thing you can give them. And I knew that Royale and Coach Mantegna being a part of this because of who they are, uh, they were not going to worry about anything else besides, you know, giving it their best, but also it's what they get from it uh, that makes them enjoy it, uh, makes them want to get up. And now they're part of history. Uh, and Royale is a hell of a coach that I couldn't see any other coach that could have brought us here. Uh, his personality, um, you know, his basketball IQ, but also the fact that all these players can relate to him and he can get the best out of them. Um, and, you know, I knew that he had to be the guy and I didn't have to ask him twice uh, to do it. And when you have somebody like that who's doing it for, or understands that it's more than basketball, it's really, really easy. To, to just follow his lead on the court and what, you know, how he sees it and how we should play. And he put together the perfect uh, strategy for our team. And that's why, you know, we are here and that's why we want to be like this. Um, Dennis, thank you for here. Thank you for us. Quite a lot and congratulations. You made the uh, Southampton proud. You made the Southampton East proud. And uh, good as to your new team. And I just have, uh, Two questions. One is every African, South Sudanese or African is looking up to to you now. Just talk to us about the attributes of uh, the great leader, just one or two principles that that make a good leader like you. And then what what how, how does it feel to qualify for the Olympics and to be the giant of Africa? And then lastly just a shout out to all the South Sudanese fans across the world and in Sudan, South Sudan. Yeah. Uh, no, definitely. First of all, I think, uh, you know, we, we're, we're, we're going to take this opportunity and, and, you know, represent Africa to the fullest, to the best of our ability going forward. Um, I think for me, I've seen it, and a lot of people have seen it a long time, that if you invest in the youth in Africa, uh, if you invest in your people and uh, give them the best opportunity to succeed, um, you know, we have a lot of talent. Know, we can really uh, be up there with the rest of the world the majority of things when you give the opportunity. I think that it doesn't take you know a genius to see that every time uh, an African player uh, makes it, uh, majority of time they have to go to Europe or they have to come to the U.S. at a young age. Uh, and most of it is not because of the talent, it's because of the you know lack of facilities and also improving you know. Um, whatever it is that that department or whatever it is you need to focus on. Uh, but for me, I hope that that's an example uh, to show the rest of Africa, you know, that if you really invest uh, and put the right surrounding uh, around our youth, uh, 
will be very successful, but also it will change the direction of the things that they get into. Uh, you know, for me, I keep saying this is more than basketball, but you know, the stadiums being full in South Sudan, that's time for all these kids instead of being in the street, instead of thinking of all the struggles they've gone through, to actually be proud of where they're from and actually believe that they can also, you know, represent their country one day, uh, but also have something different to talk about, something positive. And I think we need to start looking at sports and all other things like that, you know, investing in things that take youth uh, time to, to spend their time on the right things. Uh, when you don't have things like sports and art or music or whatever that we're not investing in, uh, kids will find time to spend on something else. And a lot of time, those are not positive things. Hi, my, my name is Anil from, from Italy. I want to, to ask you a couple of questions. The first one, if there is someone uh, or something particular on your mind uh, today after this massive achievement. And the second one, um, you already participated in the Olympics, you know what it means. Um, in London, the motto was inspire a generation. Do you think you inspire the generation not only of uh, South Sudanese players or potential players in the future by what you've done in the last years? Yeah, no, uh, definitely. I think, you know, the other day, the, uh, our vice president, um, Madame uh, Mama Rebecca, came to watch us play. And, you know, for us, our hero, John Karan, uh, he's, he's the one who, you know, saw the vision um, of us standing up for ourselves and fighting back for being oppressed or what was going on in Sudan. And I always remember, even when I was speaking with Mama Rebecca, I remember his speech, you know, when he said that uh, Sudan uh, or us, our people, one day represent our country in the Olympics. Uh, and I think today that day has come, uh, you know, and uh, it, it probably came a lot earlier than what a lot of people thought. Uh, but he believed in it, and for me, that's the first thing that came to my mind, because I remember listening to this speech and actually believing that it's possible. Uh, and this is not the last time we're gonna be in the Olympics, and I'm not talking about basketball. Uh, this is just basketball with first, because I was blessed and I had the opportunity to have the career that I had to be able to invest in what I invested in, but then it was picked up uh, by the president and, and the support from home. Uh, but if we look at other sports that I believe that we can succeed in and, and, and invest in it, um, we'll represent here for many years. And for all the athletes, uh, whether it's Africans all around the world that I'm inspired, I think that, you know, I always say, uh, being retired and finding something that I love to do and being around it, um, you know, this came from the heart, nothing else. And I think, you know, if it inspired a lot of people, um, I hope it did. And I hope that um, a lot of athletes, uh, especially especially in the continent, uh, a lot of athletes go back. Um, and it doesn't have to be money, but their knowledge. You know, we spend a lot of time playing this sports. You know, so if you can go back and give anything back that you learned all throughout those years, that's doing something. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Lang. Congrats on such an amazing result and achievement. In the mix zone, Luni almost told us that nobody ever imagined or dreamed of being in this situation. Have you ever imagined or dreamed that? And which was the one that you did? Honestly, I, 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 I did. I, I really believe that we can do it, which makes it even so much better. I really believe that we can get out of Zone 5. When we got out of Zone 5, I really believe that uh, you know, we can go to Afro Basket. Uh, when we got to Afro Basket, uh, I believe that we can get to the World Cup. And on our way here, I believe that we can make it to the Olympics. Uh, you know, and I think uh, credit to just all the players We've had a lot of players, you know, take us to the next level, and the team keeps getting better because the competition is hard. But I just want, you know, the players here. Obviously, they got us to the World Cup in this window. But every player from day one, and every staff member, and every coach uh, that's been a part of this, uh, they really had a lot to do with us being here. Um, I, I can't ask for anything more. I think 
you know, you have your ups and downs, but overall, what we did here is pretty amazing. Uh, with how we did it, uh, with how big our office is or our staff, um, you know, nobody was paid. Uh, nobody was paid in the coaching staff, the players. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing, and it's a story that doesn't happen often, and it's something that it needs to be said more. Uh, but we're just a bunch of individuals that really believe in our vision and have a big heart, and we want to make it happen, and we did. Thank you. We have five more minutes to go, so one, two, and then another question, and then we have answer. All right. <clears throat> Good evening, Lou. Well, Ivan from Dawood Philippines. Uh, Coach Joel mentioned earlier about your vision for this team. But aside from that, what's the secret to forming this successful team in just 10 years? I think, um, obviously, I said earlier with the Caps, but I really, really believe that you got to work with individuals that are passionate. I think a lot of times we skip that. you got to really bring people around that believe in the same goal and are passionate. For me, everyone that we work together, Everyone, I just know that everyone in my office and everyone in the coaching staff, everyone really believed in this. And everyone knew why we are doing it. It wasn't just, I want to hang around, I want to be there. Or uh, It was different. It was, you know, uh, really having individuals and also having, you know, the, having the nerves and having the courage to stand up for what's wrong and what's not right. Uh, and I think over the years, our staff and our team, we became closer um, because we started to understand and learn from each other. Thank you. Lul, congratulations. You played with and against the best players in the world, the NBA. But I want to ask you about these players, your guys. What do they have inside of them? Who are them to be able to achieve this uh, amazing and historic uh, qualification? Yeah, um, amazing guys. Before anything, before basketball, we've been very blessed to have a bunch of players that uh, are good people, um, and they want to make history, and nothing matters. It's, ne it's never about their number. Uh, and I think for me, I've watched a lot of national teams um, over the years, and the best national teams are those that play with a lot of passion. Uh, and also, it doesn't matter who does what as long as you get a win. And, you know, the other day I told you, and I told other people when we played Serbia, uh, for us it's the first time, so we're learning. And I'm watching every, whether it's Italy, Serbia, um, you know, whoever's around, when we were in Australia, I'm watching what they do and how they do it because it's not an accident to, to, to be one of the best, you know, uh, countries in basketball for a long time. And, you know, that passion that we have, and I see it in other great teams, we have that. So what's left is just, you know, consistency and organization. Uh, but we are very blessed with a bunch of players that are passionate about their country. Yes. Um, this is a historic moment for South Sudan and very emotional for us. Um, Coach Royal was crying. I started crying. It's unbelievable. and. I just want you to express uh, what's your goal for Olympics. Um, you know, it's it's crazy because we have a very good team, and we're gonna go there and try to win every game we play. Uh, that's that's our main goal. But my really biggest take from it, um, and I'm getting emotional as I said it, but um, you know, for me, I really I wanted uh, while we're all here in my lifetime to see our flag. I think, uh, you know, I did it with uh, Great Britain. Uh, I walked down the first opening ceremony and we raised the flag as we marched. And I think for me, uh, you know, as much as I love that, uh, this moment is gonna be everything. Uh, and it's gonna be everything for us. And I think after that, we play basketball and we see how it goes. But just to be able to be you know, in a conversation and represent that flag in the opening ceremony, uh, I think it means a lot for everybody. And that will be, I mean, it's historic now, but when it happens, it will be even uh, major. So. Um, I think I will ask the, right, the last question. It's not a question, but maybe you can give us a last statement on making it to the Olympics, and you often talk about impact. 
on the people back home um, do you think you have achieved what you've been trying to do since the beginning and what's next? Yeah, I, I, I really believe that um, since we started uh, in, in Kenya, in Zone 5, uh, there's a few moments that kind of changed the course of our people uh, in terms of excitement, um, being proud, coming together uh, as South Sudanese, having a different topic to talk about. Uh, with that being all said, seeing what's going on at home, uh, seeing the fans, uh, the support that we're getting, uh, you know, everything stopping for everyone to watch on the big screen, our sponsors supporting us and believing in us. Um, I can sit here and, and tell you guys from the beginning what, you know, we went through or what I went through, all the positive, the negative. Um, and also the people that believed in us, I knocked in a lot of people's doors um, to, to, to support us, they didn't believe it. Um, and a lot of these people are companies that are in South Sudan that are benefiting from resources from South Sudan, but they don't want to invest in the people of South Sudan. And, and they didn't believe in us, and they turned us down. Uh, MTN uh, sponsored us. Uh, Peak uh, sponsored us. Um, and for me and for us, we're forever grateful because they're the first to come on the table, but they're, you know, they're, they're supporting us. Uh, has allowed us to do a lot of things. And as for the people of South Sudan, um, you know, we're gonna celebrate this and enjoy it, but, you know, the, the, the impact that it's making for the youth uh, and the fact that now, hopefully now, we can invest more on the youth. And I'm not here to just say basketball. Um, you know, sports in general, but music, art, we have so much talent uh, and so much time is being wasted. Just, just need to believe in and invest in that. Um, but I believe that that should be the conversation now. Um, the Olympics is great and I'm happy, but the conversation should be what are we doing now that the fact that you know basketball is able to do this. You know, what are we doing with other sports and other platforms? They need to be supported also. Thank you. I think that concludes.